Where does the second draft begin? Your second draft should begin when your first draft ends and you go off and do something else, <laughs> right? Go away, stop looking at it, take your mind off of it, which I know is very, very hard, right? But take your mind off of it, go do something else for at least a week. Give your brain an opportunity to rest and then come back, reread it first before you start writing because you should be giving your own notes, right? You might not know how to give notes like a script consultant or know how to give notes like an executive, but something in you is telling you that something's not working, right? And so you need to track what those things are. So read your script and then just kind of start making notes for yourself about, okay, this isn't clear right here, or this gets a little confusing here, etc. So that when you're going back for your revision, you can address those things. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you're probably gonna go back because you need to do a proofreading pass. You need to do a formatting pass. Uh, you might know that you wanna look at the dialogue again and make sure that it's not as on the nose or in some places not too long, you know, and things like that. So, you know, not everyone goes into their second draft with the same um, intention. If you've been doing this long enough, then you already know however many drafts you're gonna have, so the second draft is gonna come. But if you're new with this, once you've finished and you really don't know what should happen next, that's the time when you need to get another set of eyes on it. That's the time when you wanna to come to a script consultant to say, hey, here it is. Can you tell me <laughs> you know, which direction I need to go in here? Do I need to rewrite from the beginning? Do I need to you know, just fix a few things here and there? And then now you get back into that second draft process of addressing those notes. What do a lot of writers get wrong about starting that second draft? They don't give it enough space? Yeah, I would say not giving it enough space because you haven't given your mind an opportunity to see it differently, right? That's what's so great about having a second pair of eyes on something, right? Because this person is not bringing any, anything into it, not the experience of it, not that one scene that you really wanted to keep but you had to lose. That person doesn't know anything. And you'd be surprised at how much you can forget in a week, right? So if you give yourself an opportunity to come back and reread, then you'll kind of see it differently and a little bit more objectively, even though it's yours. So I think giving that space is necessary. And then having that second, second set of eyes if you need it. Even if that's someone else that you know, maybe it's a script consultant because at least you know you'll get clear and actionable uh, um, notes. But even if it's just someone that you trust, somebody who can read it and just go, ah, this is how I felt or yeah, you know, it's, it's looking good, whatever that is, getting feedback and again, that's a hard thing. None of us want to be critiqued. None of us want to be told that it's terrible. You know, everybody wants to be told this is perfect and this is great, but that's just not going to be true. Even if it's a great story, there's probably going to be something that you can tighten up. So having someone, again, going back to that brain trust, you might not be at the point where you have executives as your brain trust, but there's somebody or some people who you can send your screenplay to who can be honest with you about where to start. Because I think I think by now most writers know that writing is rewriting, but that doesn't mean they know that there's a difference between rewriting and revising or where they should even start with their rewrite or with their revision because everything should not be a page one rewrite, right? You need to know what you're going into your draft to do, right? You have to have a plan for it. It might not be as big of a plan as outlining, you know, uh, like we talked when you're we going to do your first draft, but there should be a plan. It shouldn't just be, oh, I'm just going to start writing from the top again, or I'm just gonna start revising from the top again. You may be revising something that doesn't need to be revised. So being able to get you know, another pair of eyes on it and making sure you're spending time away from it while you're getting other pairs of eyes on it, leave it alone. Do not keep writing while other people are reading. You could be causing problems, <laughs> right? That they don't get to give you any, any feedback on because they don't see them because you're over here still writing while they're doing this, right? Or you could be removing something that works really well you know what I mean? Let it go. Step away from it and give your give either yourself time to look at it from a different perspective or give the other person time to send it back to you with the feedback so that you can kind of know where to start. How does a writer know what is wrong with their first draft? Yeah, that's a good question. I think if you haven't been doing this very long, you might not know, right? Which is why you need your brain trust or you need a script consultant or someone who can come in and kind of look at it to guide you. If you've been learning screenplay structure, you might be able to say, I feel like something's supposed to happen right here and I just don't know what it is. And now again, you've got to reach out to somebody who can help you figure out what that thing is that you're missing. Hopefully, most people who are choosing to write have a natural sense of storytelling. And if you have a natural sense of storytelling, something is doing this to you to go, 
this something right here. You might not be able to put your hand on it because you're a newer writer, right? And that's why you want somebody else to take a look at it. If you've been doing this often enough, then you already know. So for example, I was working on this uh, screenplay and I was doing all of my pre-work, right? Like my uh, character building and uh, understanding their goals, etc. before I get to my outline, etc. I never continued mostly because I got busy, but because I un already understood there was a problem and I hadn't fixed it yet. And the problem was she was gonna be unlikable. I wanted her to not be what we view women to be. You know, I didn't want her to be happy. She's been through some stuff, she's not happy. But even in her not being happy, people have to want to root for her. So she's got to be likable in some way. And I hadn't at that time figured out how to make her likable. So I didn't bother to start reading the screen, writing the screenplay. Now I'm not saying that's what everybody else should do. <laughs> you know, you can go ahead and write it and then go back in and try to make her likable. But because I already understood it to be a problem because I know that you have to like or relate, right? And you know, for her, I felt like she wasn't gonna be likable or relatable because I was making her in a way that people feel women don't show up as. So for an example, she has a great husband. Great, but for her, he's annoying. Right. And so many women will say, you've got a good man, then you should be X, Y and Z. But for her, because of her trauma, which has nothing to do with him, she cannot accept him in that way. That's not something that's in quotations relatable because we don't talk about that often enough. Might be a lot of women who are going through it, but we don't necessarily talk about it. Right. And so since we don't talk about it now, we just see a woman who's being mean to a very, very nice man. Are we going to want to root for her? <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe not. So because that was something I already understood, I knew not to go forward. Um, and you know, maybe one day I'll have time and I can go back and I can figure out how to make her likable you know, with other things. Um, but I think if you really understand all of the little elements along the way and you've done the pre-work you know, along the way, then you'll start to know, I didn't quite figure this, this part out. Like I know that this is conflict, but I'm not really sure if it's working. I know I've got a climax, but I'm not really sure if it's big enough or if it's landing. You know what I mean? You'll kind of feel those things even if you don't have the, uh, the vocabulary or the words to kind of talk about it and express it, which is why, again, get that brain trust, get that writer's group, get your script consulting, get somebody else who can do that part for you so that you can, you know, at least open the door for understanding for the next time around. How focused on page count should new writers be for the second draft? Yeah. So I think it depends on what it is. If it's a feature, page count matters for genre, right? Horror stories are usually not very long. They're usually gonna be in the 80, 90, less than 100 kind of range. If you're doing a drama, it's probably gonna be around 120 pages or so. If you're doing a biopic, it might be 130 pages because you're talking about a person's entire life, right? So I think it's not about writing to the page count, but it is about understanding the genre in which you're writing, right? Because no one's watching a three hour romantic comedy. You know what I mean? So it's like for you to understand the genre that you're writing and kind of live within that space. Because again, people want to show up to something that they understand, right? Like if I'm going to a Marvel film, if I'm going to Avatar, I might understand that I'm going to be in here for a long time, right? But if I think that I'm just going to go watch, you know, guess who's coming to dinner, then I'm not trying to be in here for, you know, for three hours to do that. So understanding the rules of your, of, of your genre is going to help with page count. When it comes to television, on the other hand, it's about where you're, submitting, where you're submitting to. So for the most part, if you're writing a TV script and you're a new writer, you're nine times out of 10 not pitching it anywhere because you don't have that relationship yet that we talked about, right? You don't have that agent, that manager, that lawyer or whoever that's gonna connect you to the executive to be able to pitch it in the first place. So nine times out of 10, it's a writing sample. Whether you want it to be that or not, that's what it is, right? Nine times out of 10, it's not gonna be picked up to be a pilot today. Maybe later on in life, after you've gotten a little bit more established, maybe you might be the 1% that did get picked up like Pose did, right? But for the most part, it's, it's probably just going to be a writing sample that's a stepping stone to get you to where you want to be. If you're now submitting it to fellowships or you're submitting it to screenplay competitions, most of the time they will give you a page count. Therefore, you need to be writing towards it because if not, you're going to be disqualified, right? So if it said 60 page and you send, send in 61, you're out. So you need to be writing to 60. If you get to the point where you are um, being able to submit to studios, networks, etc., then going back to that homework about that brand, right? How many screenplays have you read from that network? How many, um, how often have you watched the episode and kind of paid attention to the time? 
right? Because if it's on a streamer, one episode could be 30 minutes, the next one's 45 minutes, the next one's blah, blah, blah. So maybe it doesn't matter how long your screenplay is. But if you're watching HBO, it might be clockwork, 59 minutes, which means you're probably not going to have more than 65 pages. So you want to stay in that. Um, so it just depends on what you're going to do with it. Now, with that being said, I'm not necessarily saying that second drafts are about page count because if you have other problems, page count is the least of your worries, right? I always tell people, put it all on the page. You can always trim it later, always, right? So you might not start trimming until you get to draft five or draft 10, depending upon how long it's taking you to get what you need, right? But if you are um, in a place where you understand what your problems are and you're able to fix those problems, then I would say second draft is about fixing problems, right? And you wanna fix problems until you get those problems fixed. And then you wanna worry about page count because if you need to trim, then you're gonna have to, you know, everything affects everything, right? So if you need to trim, you taking one piece out of a conversation might change how your character reacts to the other person. Because again, if the character was saying a curse word and now suddenly that curse word's not in there, and let's say it's back to the daughter cursing the mom, right? If the daughter curses the mom, the mom's gonna respond a particular way. If somehow, some way, due to page count, you cut out that part, mom's not responding that same way and now there's a trickle you know trickle down effect so uh trimming can um can change the context of of what your screenplay is so you will definitely need a draft that is about trimming but it might not be your second draft so first draft is creating problems second draft is fixing them fixing them <laughs> third draft is problems are solved or not always oh yeah not always oh okay <laughs> not always but hopefully uh, you know hopefully but not always